Yeah, it's, this one really raises some big questions. What's on your mind? Chodesh Tov, this week here in Eretz Yisrael, we'll be reading Parashat Chukat. And in this week's parasha, so many things are happening. This is the parasha when we jump in time forwards towards the end of the journey in the desert. And in this week's parasha, we find not only that Miriam leaves Am Yisrael, but also that Aharon is Niftar, Aharon leaves Am Yisrael too. And on top of those two, we are also told that Moshe will not be entering Eretz Yisrael, and he too will be dying before Am Yisrael enters Eretz Yisrael. And when you look into the Psukim, into these different stories, of the Ptira of Miriam, of Miriam's death, and then of Aharon, there is a very, very big difference over here. When you look at the stories, when Miriam dies, it's kind of if the Torah continues on into the next story, not even stopping to recognize that Miriam died. It barely mentions that she dies, they bury her, and then right away we go into the story, the famous story of Meme Riva, Amisal not having water to drink. Chazal from that learned that the Be'er, that the water Amisal had in the desert the entire time was because of Miriam. But really, on the Pshat level, of the psukim, you have to ask yourself, what happened over there? Didn't they notice that Miriam died? Doesn't she deserve a little bit more respect? Just like we see with Aharon later on, that when he dies, he gets a full parshia, he gets his own ending for the psukim, where it says that he dies, and Amisrael mourned him for 30 days, and Amisrael felt his death, and then also it continues on into the next story of Sichon coming to fight Amisrael, and again, Chazal connects that to the fact that the Ananeha Kavod were following Amisrael the entire time in the desert, thanks to Aharon, and Chazal make the connection also over there. But we see this big difference in the response of Am Yisrael to Miriam's death and to Aaron's death in the morning and what they felt, what the Torah describes to us went on. So what exactly is going on over here? Why do we go past Miriam's death so easily, so quickly into the next story, not even recognizing it? And if you want to say that she wasn't on that level of Aaron, I'll just remind you that a couple of parshas ago, Am Yisrael waited for seven days in the desert until Miriam was cured from her tzarat. So it's not like as if Miriam was a nobody. She was one of the great leaders of Amisel. She was a leader in the desert. Amisel saw as a leader. Amisel recognized her leadership by waiting seven days when she had Sarat. So what's going on over here? Why is there no recognition of her death, just like with Aharon or similar to what we recognize with Aharon later on in the Psukim? Oh, that's very interesting. That's a fascinating question. I never really thought about it. And you're right. Chazal do talk about the Parsha that comes right after. And we right away remember that. Look how important Miriam is when she's gone, the water is gone. But we don't notice there's something else that's gone, is Am Yisrael's response to Miriam's death. And as you said, Chazal do the same thing when Aaron dies. But if we look carefully, there's a huge difference between those two stories. Because here it's a really tragic story. We look, it starts with Am Yisrael being thirsty, not having what to drink, and then complaining and saying, you know, why'd you bring us here? And then the whole story with Moshe, which ends up with Moshe and Aaron not entering Eretz Yisrael because of this story. It's hard to compare this to the story after Aaron dies, where there the only thing we say is that the reason that Sichon decides to fight Am Yisrael is because he sees that the Ananea Kavod, these clouds that were protecting Am Yisrael are gone once Aaron's gone. But it doesn't really work for him, right? He tries to attack Am Yisrael, but Am Yisrael conquer him. So it's hard to compare these two stories. When Aaron's gone, the Ananea Kavod are gone, but Am Yisrael continues to win the wars. When Miriam's gone, the water's gone and everything collapses. Moshe and Aaron don't go into Eretz Yisrael. The whole nation who for 40 years almost, we haven't heard anything, any complaints, anything about them. They seem to be doing what they should have done for the past 40 years. There was no important story to tell us. And suddenly they're saying, you know, why you bring us here? What is this all for? What, what's going on? But maybe this is exactly the point. Maybe you're right. Something went wrong here. Miriam died and they didn't stop to recognize her death, to recognize her loss, to recognize how important she was. Maybe they didn't really notice. They will in a minute. But maybe at that first moment, you know, Miriam was always there. They knew she was important. They knew she, you know, who she was. But at the end of the day, she was old and they were, you know, moving on. And the way of the world, human nature is people die. So their response, maybe there was a response, but we don't see the detail. But maybe that's the point. Miriam was the quiet leader. Miriam was the one who behind the scenes was always there giving the strength. If you go back from the beginning, she she was the one who was able to see the future beyond the troubles happening in Mitzrayim. She was the one who, as Chazal teach us, when Parah was throwing the babies into the Nile, she was the one who 
said, you can't give up now. And she brought her parents back together, which brings Moshe into this world. And she's the one who stands from afar and watches over Moshe. It's an interesting thought if we think about it. From the day Moshe is born, Miriam is watching over him. And the moment Miriam's gone is the moment Moshe falls apart, is the first moment that Moshe messes up and ends up not going into Eretz Yisrael. That first moment when Miriam's gone, Miriam who's always watching over in the background. But she's also the one who was able to see through the troubles. She was the one able to see all the troubles in the way and not be scared by them. To see the full journey, to see to the end, to see through the challenges, to be that backbone of emuna, of faith, which really held Am Yisrael through all its troubles from before Moshe is born until now. And when she's gone, what happens is what happens often when quiet leaders are gone. At the first moment, people don't realize how much they meant. And only then do they realize how everything's falling apart because she's gone. And the psuki make this very, very clear. This isn't just like with Aaron, another story that happens later. This is totally connected. The Torah uses Vav HaChibur, the letter Vav, which connects. Miriam dies and the people didn't have water. And it's not only the people didn't have water. If they didn't have water, they should be complaining that they want water. They don't ask for water. The Torah tells us they didn't have water. And the result is they start saying, you know, why'd you bring us here? What was this all for? We should have died with our brothers and sisters back in the desert before it. What's going on? But suddenly when that backbone is gone, that faith that brought them through the journey, they don't know how they can continue the next step. And without realizing what was holding them up, everything starts to fall apart, even impacts Moshe and Aaron, the leaders who basically can't continue and lead Am Yisrael into Eretz Yisrael. And maybe your question is actually the answer. Maybe what happens here with Aaron is Bnei Israel learns the lesson of Miriam is learning the lesson of mourning, the importance of mourning. Because what you do when you mourn is first of all, you recognize the law. You stop everything and all the halachot of the avelut have to do with this, about recognizing, about stop. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Don't do other things. Focus on the loss. You need to recognize the loss. You need to recognize what you lost. And this allows you to take from the one you lost, to take what you can with you for the journey forward. When when that doesn't happen, everything falls apart. When it does, we see Sichon come to attack Am Yisrael because the Ananea Kavod are gone. But Am Yisrael are already ready now for the next step in their journey and they're able to fight that battle. Maybe the mourning of Aaron is actually Am Yisrael doing a tikkun, fixing the lack of mourning for Miriam. The lack of mourning for Miriam brings this sort of collapse. But after mourning for Aaron and spending time and recognizing Aaron's role, even once Aaron's gone, Am Yisrael are able to take the strength they got from Aaron and continue on their journey to the next step. Beautiful, beautiful, and very true what you're saying, because really you have to recognize it in the Psukim. Like you were saying, the Vava Chibu over here, that the issue of Mei Meriva, the problem that began with not having water, is a direct outcome of the fact that Miriam died and they buried her and just moved on. This is how the story of Miriam's death continued, into the fact that they did not have water, that they did not have what to drink, which led into the complaining, which led, as you were saying, into Moshe and Aaron sinning, maybe because, again, they did not have Miriam watching over them. Like you were saying, we know Miriam was always there behind the scene, backstage, making sure things are going the way they're supposed to go. And really, when you look at this connection between Miriam and the water and the Be'er and Miriam's leadership, it's not only in this week's parasha and these tzukim, it's not only Chazal making this cute connection between the two stories, telling us that when Miriam died, they had no water. But really, when we go back to the beginning of Sever Shemot, to the first time we meet Miriam, like you were saying, she's over there by the water, on the water, waiting to see what's going to happen with Moshe. And then again, the next time we meet Miriam is after Yetziat Mitzrayim, after the Egyptians all drowning in the sea, and Moshe leads Amisel in the singing, and then Miriam leads the women in singing based on what happened to the Mitzrayim in the water, in the sea over there. And there's a very interesting point in the story over there when Miriam leads the women in singing in the Psukim themselves, when you read the psukim one after each other and you try to notice the Hebrew like we keep on doing on these videos over here that you have to notice that is a hundred percent connected to what's going on over here and also sheds light on what's going on over here because over there right after Miriam leads the women in singing we get into the first time the first story where Amisal did not have water to drink we find Amisrael in Marah 
finding water there was bitter. Marim, it's the same letters, it's the same word as Miriam, and they couldn't drink it because it was too bitter. And then Moshe takes a tree and throws it into the water in order to make it sweet. This sounds very familiar, again, looking at this week's parasha, where Miriam is not there. So Moshe takes his staff and hits the rock in order to make water, in order to get water from Israel. And when you look at the psukim like that, slowly, slowly, it starts to shed light on what Miriam meant for Am Israel. Miriam was not only the one that was over there in the back, looking over Moshe, making sure that everything is being done the right way, making sure that the future for Am Israel is continuing to develop, even though time is hard right now. But she was also the one that was able to take the bitterness and raise it up and turn it into sweetness. She was the one that was able to take the dark times remind us of the future and pick people up from those dark times with the knowledge that brighter days are there to come. That's what Miriam's leadership was about. Because I'll tell us that's why she was able to sing with the tambourines and the drums over there right after Yamsuf because she took them with them. Those women of Amuna of belief that knew already in Mitzrayim that they will be celebrating one day in the future. This is Miriam. That's how you find water in the desert. That's how you can find the good even even in the bad, even in the dark times. And this is very deep, but as we like to do in our videos, we like to discuss the Hebrew, the language, the letters. And when you look at the word Miriam, what is it built out of? It's built out of those concepts of mar, of bitterness, bit yam, bit maim, bit water, connecting these two together, taking the bitterness, taking the maim of mara, the marim, but turning it into drinkable water, being in the desert and finding water even in the desert. Because knowing that these dark times now is just a process that is getting to a better future that is getting to a better time. And once you get there, that's when you can really celebrate and take all of Amisa with you and sing. That's who Miriam is. And again, going back to this week's parasha, you know, you have to ask, where is this complaint of Amisa also coming from? Sometimes we are so used to this complaint. Oh, we should have stayed in Egypt. Why did you take us out of Egypt? That we keep on forgetting what's actually going on over here. But these people who are complaining here now, this is the generation that either wasn't even in Egypt or was too young to understand what was going on over there in Kiyat Yamsuf and Yitziat Mitzrayim. This is a new generation, as Rashi tells us. And when you actually look at what they're saying, they're not saying we remember Egypt because they were not there. They're not saying let's go back to Egypt because they don't want to go there. They're asking, why did you bring us all the way here? Was all this journey for this? This is what we came here for. This is the land of milk and honey that we were waiting for. And looking at the complaint like that and understanding who these people are, this lesson from Miriam is maybe exactly what's missing from their life. Although this generation was born in the desert, grew up in the desert. They grew up in the environment of miracles, of Nisim all around them. Whatever they needed, they had. They had the man, the mana, they had the water, they had the clouds, their clothes never got worn out. Whatever they wanted, they had. They did not know what difficulty is. And maybe this is what they need to start learning now. And what, as you said, they were not aware that they even had with them as long as Miriam was living. And only after she died, only after she left, that's when some suddenly they realize what they had in their hands. Suddenly they realize how good the life was and how hard actually life can be. And maybe this is what Ami said is understanding over here and what leads later on to them waiting 30 days for Aharon because they didn't do it here. Understanding that life is full of difficulties. Understanding that life is a journey. Understanding that life is a process. Understanding that in life you find bitter times and bitter places, but you got to be able to pick yourself up from there. You got to be able to raise yourself Harim, which is also the same Shorish as Miriam, the same word as Miriam. Pick yourself up, raise yourself up in order to get to the sweetness, in order to find the water in the desert. This is the lesson that Amisel was not aware of and the lesson that they had to learn and that they learned in the very painful way after the death of Miriam. You know, what's very interesting with all of this is really that whenever I saw this idea of when Miriam dies, we right away have the story of Ne Meriva. What I always saw was when Miriam dies, we lost the water. But based on what we're saying, what Torah is teaching us is a lot more than that. When Miriam died, not the water happened. When Miriam died, this whole story happened. The whole story of the complaints and the loss and Moshe and Aaron, all of that, not just the water being gone, all of what develops is a direct result of the loss of Miriam. And that's why there's a Vava Chibur. Not just that they don't have water, but that look what happens when you don't have that strong backbone of Miriam, that faith, those
those quiet leaders that stand behind us and give strength to everyone, even if they're not at the front and they're not what everyone's focused on. When we look deeply, we realize those are the true leaders, the ones that really give us the strength to deal with every day and to deal with our journeys, big or small. Exactly, exactly. And as we know, it doesn't end here. Later on in the parsha, again, we meet the same complaints of not having water. This is the process that now Amisel is learning all over again, because again, this is a new generation that's about to go enter El Tisrael to leave the land of the desert, which was a land of miracles for them. So they have a lot to learn. They have a lot of emuna to absorb. But very interestingly, that after this process, after they find water again, that's when suddenly we see again Amisel singing, just like they sang last time with Moshe, with Miriam, but this time without Miriam, and also without Moshe, a very interesting pasuk that singing, what is it even doing there? But understanding this whole process, this whole story of Miriam, now you can also understand why that singing is over there, where did that Shirata Be'er come from? But we're out of time, so we'll have to end here again. As usual, it's way more deeper than this. There's so much more we can talk about. But we'll just remind again the viewers what we discussed last year. Last year in Parashat Chukat, we discussed a very famous Chok of Para Aduma. Why is it a Chok? Why is that the example for a Chok, for a law that we don't understand? And on top of that, why even do we have Chukim that we don't understand? We know usually when we want to teach kids to do things, we want them to obey to what we're saying. So we try to explain to them why we want them to do so. When you give a rationale behind things, usually people adapt and do those things even better and make sure to carry them out. So what is the idea of having a chok that we can't understand? We'll link that video at the end of this one. Two years ago, we asked a question about Moshe Sin. What was so bad about him hitting the rock? Isn't it magical enough that the rock gives water after hitting it? Why is that such a big avera? We'll link those two videos right now. And as usual, if you enjoy these videos, feel free to like them, comment on YouTube below. It really helps the algorithm to promote our videos. And also, of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. It helps us grow the channel too. And shkoyech yitzi. Shkoyech tuvia, chodesh tov, and shabbat shalom. Chodesh tov, shabbat shalom, and we'll talk again in Mitzvah Shem next week.